Hello and welcome to the DSO Imager channel. My name is James and uh, I decided to do a video tonight. Um, I actually uh, got both of my rigs run, running. Uh, this is my edge and uh, give you guys a peek. I think we can all tell what that is. And um, Here's my uh, little 70 millimeter scope, and I'm trying something uh, different here. It's a full moon. In fact, last night was the uh, eclipse. So I'm running uh, an HA filter against a double cluster to see if I can pull out any of the uh, hydrogen alpha that's in the uh, background. So you don't see it in a lot of images, especially uh, in images of star clusters, but there is some ISM out there, interstellar, interstellar medium, and there's little traces of ionized HA out there. So maybe I'm thinking if I can pull some of that HA out, that might give some extra color uh, to uh, an open cluster shot like this. But we'll see. It may not work out. But uh, this is kind of related to tonight's video. So what I want to uh, demonstrate tonight is uh, how to mix HA with your RGB or LRGB images. Now the method I used for this picture here, uh, this is uh, technically NGC 206, that's that star cluster here that's in the uh, uh, Andromeda galaxy. But the technique that I used is I picked up from uh, one of my club members and uh, it's right here on this website. And so this process uh, does use pixel math in, uh, uh, in Pix and Sight. And it's kind of a two-step process. And we're going to go through this formula. And uh, this formula here. And basically what you're doing essentially is you're taking the bits in the HA that don't exist in your red channel and adding them to the red channel. And then if you're using uh, uh, luminance also, then you'll want to do the same step to add the hydrogen alpha bits to the luminance channel. And then you put it all back together. If you're using a one-shot color camera, it's, uh, it's the same as mono, really. Uh, you can just break the uh, RGB image into the three separate channels and then if you use a filter like the L Extreme to pick up some HA which works perfectly well uh, on galaxies uh, then you can split that into RGB toss the green and blue keep the red as your HA and then follow through these steps uh, to add that um, HA to the red channel and then put it all back together so rather than do the typical workflow uh, process uh, or video that I typically do, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show this. Now, I wanted to try this. Obviously, it works pretty good on galaxies, and, and the whole page is, is written for enhancing the regions of galaxies. But I was curious if the same uh, uh, procedure would work on a regular RGB image, uh, not a uh, galaxy. And so I tested it out on the Ghost Nebula, which is that uh, HA, little HA dusty region right next to the star Navi and Cassiopeia. So I want to give that a shot and uh, I'll go, I'll reproduce the steps to combine the HA with the red and with the luminance and then show the final image. And uh, we'll see how that works. Okay, so first things first, let's look at the data. So this was shot with uh, ASI 294 Mono uh, using astronomic filters on uh, my Celestron Edge HD8. So here's our HA. There's the red. There's green. and blue and the luminance. So I mean, especially comparing, maybe I should flip this around real quick.
Yeah, so, I mean, and I, I, I don't remember offhand how much exposure I got, but I got a lot of exposure. And this was actually pretty challenging uh, uh, data acquisition. We had a lot of clear nights when I got this data, but it was windy, and so the tracking was less than great. Uh, but you can still see a significant difference here. Uh, right, these are not processes, just straight auto stretch. So yeah, you get all this nice detail in the HA that uh, you don't get in, uh, in broadband. However, uh, you get all this dust and there's little bits of blue, little bits of reflection in here that uh, you don't get with the HA filter. Also, you see kind of this bright patch here. That's, uh, that's uh, from Nabi, that bright star. Just, I kept it just off frame hoping it wouldn't impact the image too much. Alright, so first we have to do some prep work on these files. We need to uh, make sure they're all registered. We need to crop them, right? Get rid of these stacking artifacts that we have on the edges there. Uh, and if you're going to run dynamic background extraction, which on a target like this you're definitely going to want to, uh, you want to get that knocked out too. Alright, so uh, first is we have to prep the uh, HA. So here's HA, dynamic background extraction has been run, it's uh, registered, uh, so it's ready to go. Alright, so open up pixel math. And for this first step, since we're just running uh, against this HA, we're going to reset this. We can uh, use single expression here. And so the formula basically calls for the HA frame, which in this case is this guy right there, minus Q. Q is going to be our uh, or a wild card. So we can, we'll see this, I'll use it as a symbol and then we can play with that value to tweak it. Uh, and then we're going to times and we need to get our red channel. So we're looking for red registered this guy here minus MED and then the red again close those out. Destination, we're going to want to create a new image. Uh, you want to give it a name. Uh, HA clean is what they're using in this, uh, in this website that I'm following. And you can see I've already run this. It's just going to add a numeric uh, number three at the end of that. And uh, color space, same as target, same as target. The execute. Oops. Okay, so actually it didn't like the formula, and that's because I forgot one thing in there. It didn't like this, but I think what the problem is, is I forgot to define Q. Now, this value is a variable, uh, so you're going to change it. You're going to tweak it until you get a good result. Uh, this is the value that the website recommends, but you know, would it work on an RGB image like that? I'm not sure. So let's see if that does a trick for us. Yeah, that's that's what our problem was. All right, so let's see what we get here. And if I remember correctly, this is pretty close to what we want. Uh, the website. Let's just give you examples of what you're aiming for. I mean, what we want is just the HA. We don't want any of this extra stuff. But uh, this is how this process works. Now, I uh, you can see I tried different variables, and uh, they all pretty much had the same results, except it was doing some weird things with the stars.
So I think for this test, I'll just use this one that we created here. So the next step is you're supposed to create your regular RGB image, uh, which I did with the LRGB combination tool. And we have it here. Uh, they recommend that you take care of background neutralization, uh, color calibration, all that stuff prior to moving forward. So that's what we have here. This is just our red, green, and blue combined, and this is what we got. So now we go back to pixel math. I'll go ahead and reset this, and this time we are going to use all the channels. So we're going to go to expression editor again. And now for red, we're going to do dollar sign T, which is target, plus a B, which is boost, and that will be the variable that we use to tweak uh, the settings on this one. Times that by HA clean, so remember we created that HA clean. Put out a capital H. Yeah, uh, just like Linux, uh, Pixon site is uh, case sensitive. Okay, so HA clean minus mead times HA clean again. All right, we'll go to the green. Green is easy enough, it's just target. And uh, blue, target plus boost times 0 0.2 times HA clean minus med times HA clean let's close okay and symbols there's our boost B equals 3 and I think that's the value that we going to start with. And again, we can tweak that if we need to. So hit OK there. We can actually just keep it here. And then we uh, click Create New Image. Everything else is the same. And now you just drag and drop this onto here. And uh, let's see what we got. So there we go. So, I mean, you can see the difference here. Here's straight HA, I mean, uh, excuse me, RGB. And here it is with, uh, with the HA blended. And so we get a nice mix of the HA data with some of the dust and reflective stuff of the um, broadband information. So, I mean, that's pretty much the procedure right there. Uh, I'll put a link to the website in the description. Uh, it looks confusing, but it really isn't that bad uh, uh, to work through. And it works great on those galaxy shots. And it looks like it worked out pretty good on here. Now, of course, I did a lot more processing on it than this. And I'll just show you real quick uh, what I ended up with, right? So this is... This is what I had for enhanced RGB, and here we go, I, I used a star exterminator to pull the stars out so I can process this more separately. Uh, I'll, same thing with the luminance, so you can run the same procedure. The article recommends that that boost value, you can, uh, 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 it's usually less when uh, applying it to the luminance channel. Uh, but I mean it's the same thing right so we get all this nice HA detail that was lacking from the, uh, from the luminance and here's a starless of luminance uh, you can see these this is uh, from Navi this interference here uh, and I took care of most of this just to show real quick I made a mask and I just used curves to pull back on that so anyway, what I ended up with, oh, uh, so I made, 
a uh, starless version of RGB before I enhanced it with HA and saved the star mask for that. So when I put the stars back onto the starless image, I used the pure RGB stars instead of uh, the ones that have, have the HA in them. Because HA always does a little weird things to star colors sometimes. Uh, so anyway, there are the stars. And those look pretty nice, I think. And here's a starless image after I did a lot of work on it to get it to this point. You can still see remnants of that uh, interference from that star, but it's not too bad, especially uh, once you put the stars in. And so that's that was the final image. And this was my first attempt at mixing HA with LRGB uh, using this method. In the past, I would just do things like add 50% HA to 50% red or whatever and it never I was never fully satisfied with the outcome uh, but this procedure works really really well so I'd love to hear what you guys think of this uh, like I said it looks confusing it's not um, if you found uh, some value in this please uh, like the video and go ahead and subscribe and uh, comment below love to hear from you guys thanks a lot and have a good evening